Hello, my dear students. Very good morning to you all. Hope you are all doing good. And thank you so much for the fantastic response you are giving for the classes as well as videos. And today we are going to start a new interesting unit, Face Rule and Alloys, which is the third unit in our Anna University syllabus. And this is so interesting and having wide range of applications in real time. So in that we are going to discuss first about face rule and face diagrams are the gifts of face rule and these diagrams are very much helpful in making new alloys. So every one of us know that stainless steel which is ruling the world and it is made from iron. So the stainless steel is rust free that is the rate of corrosion is very much less in stainless steel. Similarly, brass and bronze. So like that, we are utilizing so many alloys in our real life. So duralumin in making the wings of helicopters as well as um, aeroplanes. Similarly, alnico. So many things we are utilizing by mixing the metals and non-metals and converting them into alloys. So those alloys are the gifts of face rule or face diagrams. So by using phase diagrams, we are converting the metals and the mixture of metals into alloys. So by mixing metals and non-metals, we are preparing alloys, but simply mixing them cannot give us a perfect alloy. So phase diagrams really helped in making alloys of certain composition and heat treatment processes of all the alloys can be derived from the phase diagrams of the alloys so with that we are now entering into the types of chemical reactions so to know the phase rule better we should know what is the principle behind that or basic behind that the chemical reactions are classified into two main types as irreversible chemical reactions and reversible chemical reactions irreversible chemical reactions are the one which takes place in only forward direction and which will not takes place in the reverse or backward direction here you can see zinc upon addition with HCl produces zinc chloride and hydrogen. The hydrogen escapes and the reaction is not reversible in nature, naturally. Then reversible reactions are classified further into two types as homogeneous reversible reactions and the heterogeneous reversible reactions. Here the homogeneous means all the things what we have taken are in the same phase. Heterogeneous the reactants as well as products are in different phase. So the same phase or homogeneous reversible reactions are dealt with law of mass action which you have studied in your high secondary. But heterogeneous reversible reactions needed separate rule to study them. So that's why our chemist Gibb derived the rule called phase rule which actually describes or which actually studies the details of heterogeneous reversible reactions. So what is phase rule? So since we are dealing with heterogeneous reversible reactions, we have to give all the details about phase rule. So we are, every one of us knew that most of the reactions, chemical reactions are not influenced by gravitational, electrical and magnetic forces. And they are influenced by pressure, temperature and concentration. So these factors, pressure, temperature and concentration are the influencing factors of a particular chemical reaction. So if this is the condition, then Gibb is introducing uh, new terms called degree of freedom, number of components and number of phases. So these terms are related by the phase rule by F is equal to C minus P plus 2 where F is number of degrees of freedoms, C is number of components, P is number of phases. So this rule is going to describe about the heterogeneous reversible reaction and its characteristics. Now we are going to see the terms involved in phase rule. So first we are going to see about phase. So which is nothing but physically distinct and mechanically separable portion of a system that is we can easily separate each and every uh, substance present in a system if the boundary is well defined. So that is called phase. So if we know the boundary well, it is physically distinct 
and it, it can be separated mechanically. For example, if I am giving salt and sand in your hands, then you can easily identify this as salt and this as sand, right? So, but both are in solid state. So, don't confuse state with phase. So, phase, so, uh, so many solids may be there, but if they are having well-defined boundary, then each will be counted as a different phase. For example, if I give salt, sugar, iron powder, sand, etc., everything is a solid in its state. But all of them are having different well-defined boundaries and all of them should be separated physically and they will be distinct from each other. So, this is called phase. So, phase is mechanically separable, physically distinct portion of a system. So, which we can identify and separate, right? Now, how we are going to identify phases of all the states? So, now gaseous phase. We all know that all gases mixes together and become one. So, even though we can mix more number of gases, so everything will be available as single phase. For example, our atmosphere is having nitrogen, oxygen, helium and some other rare gases, carbon dioxide, etc. But these gases are having no well-defined boundaries individually. But all together exist and looking as a single phase. So, if there are any number of gases given, so it will be counted as single phase and exactly they, they are in single phase okay now we are going to see about liquid phase that is if we are going to consider liquids and to count their phases we should know whether the liquid is miscible or immiscible for example if the liquid is completely uh, miscible if the liquids are completely miscible uh, a perfect example is alcohol plus water so if you are having this mixture in a bottle okay so in a container so, it, it, it is counted as a single phase and the vapors of those two liquids are counted as one single phase. So, two phases will be there. So, alcohol plus water mixture, one phase, liquid phase. Alcohol plus water mixtures vapor, another phase that is vapor phase. So, if the liquids are completely miscible, then we have to count the liquid phase one and the vapors of those liquids as another that is two phases will be there if the liquids are completely miscible if the liquids are completely immiscible if two liquids are there for example kerosene plus water benzene plus water so many things so then we have we will easily identify the layers of benzene as well as water or kerosene as well as water which means that two liquid phases are there and the vapors of these two liquids will be counted as one single phase because they will mix all together. So, two liquids, two phase plus vapors of those two liquids combined together to one phase that is three phase. So, completely immiscible liquid means we have to identify how many immiscible layers are there and we have to count all the layers as each single phase and then the vapors as another phase. So, every solid now comes to solid, every solid constitute a separate phase because they are having well defined boundary. So, using that we can differentiate them and we can separate them very smoothly. Okay. So, this is how phase is described. Now, we are going to identify the number of phases for some systems. Here, we are going to see about our familiar calcium coordinate decomposition. So, calcium coordinate which is in solid state is decomposed to gaseous carbon dioxide and solid calcium oxide. So, here you can guess. Yes, as you guessed, here three phases are there. Calcium coordinate is a solid, calcium oxide is a solid and carbon dioxide is a gaseous phase. So, calcium coordinate and calcium oxide are having well defined boundaries. So, those two solid phases and carbon dioxide gaseous phase. So, the number of phases for this system or this equation is 3. Now, we are going to identify the number of phases of a water system where all the three phases of water is in equilibrium. Solid ice, liquid water and water vapor. So, can you guess the number of phases? 
yes it is 3 so all these three are different and well separable now we are going to identify the number of phases for three allotropes of sulfur rhombic amorphous and monoclinic so here by looking into the picture you can easily identify that so each of the sulfur is having well defined structure and boundary so each will be counted as individual phases so three phases are there in the given allotropes of sulfur now can you guess what is this white powder yes it is copper sulfate the blue powder is copper sulfate pentahydrate so copper sulfate is one phase which is having a well defined boundary compared to that of copper sulfate pentahydrate blue so keep it in mind that copper sulfate without any hydrate molecules is pure white in color and if we add water droplets to them water molecules to them so each of the copper sulfate molecule takes up five water molecules and becomes blue in color so it is a yeah, three phase system that is copper sulfate pentahydrate copper sulfate and water so the number of phases in this system is 3. So now you can guess the number of phases for an oil and water system and oil and water emulsion system. So oil and water, yes, as you guessed, oil plus water, two phases and the vapor of the liquids, another phase, three phases for oil and water system. Oil plus water emulsion, there is no boundary. We cannot separate them easily. So hence it is a single liquid phase plus one vapor phase will be there. So two phase system. So number of phases for oil plus water system is three. Number of phases for oil plus water emulsion system is two. Now we are going to see about our next terminology component. So to describe a particular chemical equation, that is to describe the phase, each phase, we have to describe the constituents and we have to fix the smallest number or minimum number of independently variable constituents. Okay. So, it is nothing but the smallest number of independently variable constituents by means of which the composition of each phase can be expressed in the form of a chemical equation. So, we have to give the minimum number of variable constituents so that we can easily express the all the phases in the chemical reaction. Now, can you guess the number of components for the water system where all the three phases are in equilibrium? Yes. So, as you guessed, it is a one component system or the number of components is one, that is water. By saying water, we can easily predict that the water can be existing in all the three phases. So, to mention the phases, we have to mention the temperature and pressure okay now can you guess the components in the system yes so by describing any two of the constituents present here we can easily identify or we can easily express all the phases present in this system so if i tell that calcium carbonate and carbon dioxide are present in a system which means that there is an existence of calcium oxide also or if I tell that calcium carbonate and calcium oxide is present in that, which means that carbon dioxide is also formed during the decomposition. So, which means that we need not define all the three constituents present here. It is enough to describe or express only two co constituents to explain each phase of the system. So, hence it is a two component system or the number of components is two and the interesting ammonium chloride system can you guess what it is so ammonium chloride solid is actually a decomposing one it will decompose into ammonia and hcl in equivalent quantities so hence these two gases are present in equivalent quantities and as as you guessed the number of components in this system is only one so by describing ammonium chloride itself it is quite easy to express all the phases that is ammonia and HCl which should be present in gaseous phase okay the number of components here is only one so it is a one component system now we are coming to our another terminology degrees of freedom 
which is nothing but the number of independent variable factors that is the factors which are influencing the heterogeneous reversible reactions like temperature pressure and con concentration or even composition so which must be fixed in order to define the system completely so if we are going to describe a particular phase equilibrium so what are the minimum number of factors we need to describe that so that is called degrees of freedom for example we are now going to calculate for the water system so by using the phase rule formula gibbs phase rule formula f is equal to c minus p plus 2 we know that water is existing here in all the three phases hence p value is equal to 3 and the number of component that is water which is equal to 1 so f is equal to 1 minus 3 plus 2 which is equal to 0 non variant system now we are going to discuss or calculate the degrees of freedom for the decomposition of calcium carbonate. So, as we have discussed earlier, the phases is equal to 3, components are 2, f is equal to 2 minus 3 plus 2, f is equal to 1, univariant. So, by describing temperature itself, it is enough to describe the entire system. So, only one variant is enough to describe this system. So, uh, like this, we are going to see so many applications of phase rule in the forthcoming classes and phase diagrams of uh, two or three systems and how they are helpful in identifying the theoretical details as well as practical applications. Thank you so much for the patient listening. So, hope you have enjoyed the class. So, feel free to ask your doubts. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.